So I'm going to talk to you about Osisco Metals. Um, when, when you walk away from this presentation, you know, if, you, if you're going to invest in the zinc space, I want you to think about Osisco Metals before anything else, because we're advancing one of the highest quality projects globally. Now let's get through this. What we're advancing is the Pine Point Project. It's one of the only projects in the world that is pit-constrained zinc mineralization. It's actually quite unique. If I look at the top 10 zinc mines globally, they're all predisposed towards open pit zinc. So Red Dog, Rampura, which is transitioning underground, uh, Penisquito, these are all open pit zinc mines. And if I think about the average zinc producer, and I think of the average zinc developers, you will see underground projects time and time again. We just announced last week a 52 million ton uh, resource. 48 million tons of that is pit constrained. So it is a very large resource. We've done a number of internal scoping studies already with the Osisco group. We are part, with the Osisco Metals name, we are part of the Osisco family. And one of the things we've started to highlight w in these internal studies, which will go into a PA, which we hope to publish next year, is the fact that we are potentially looking at a top 10 zinc mine globally, and we are looking at some of the lowest uh, cash costs out there. So we think this could be a very comfortable second quartile producer and a top 10 zinc miner. So really, it is a unique zinc asset globally, and it is one, probably one of the highest quality uh, zinc projects out there. Well, we, we actually, based on our internal research, believe that there's a window of opportunity on the zinc side in 2023 as um, global concentrates start to drop down again. But what we believe are really are one of our aces in, in the hole here is that we actually have one of the cleanest concentrates out there. So yes, you may hear a lot of talk about concentrate oversupply and high TCs. What I want to point out is that those primarily affect projects that have, and, and miners, that have uh, concentrates with a lot of impurities, low, quanti low quality concentrates. And if I look at a lot of the mines forecasted to come online, I invite you to look at their concentrate. It's something that a lot of people just focus on the numbers and lose sight that maybe their concentrate is filled with arsenic or mercury or has high iron. We have none of that. And so those projects would be faced with high penalties and high TCs. We won't be faced with any of that. Pine Point is a located in the Northwest Territories. I'll just skip to this slide right here. What you see here is the fact that Pine Point was a past producer for 25 years. Cominco mined Pine Point from the mid-1960s to the mid-80s. They produced 64 million tons at 10% in an open pit scenario. What we have is 52 million tons at 6%. Call it the historical ore that they left behind because they made the discovery of Red Dog. So they actually shut down this mine and moved to Red Dog in the 80s, leaving behind a lot of historical uh, resources that we've since converted. The interesting thing here is that for Cominco, 6% was almost waste. When they were drilling it, uh, if it looked like it wasn't going to be high grade, they didn't even bother following up on it. So we actually have substantial amount of drill holes in our database that we inherited that show mineralization that are with no holes around them for 100 meters. Uh, Cominco, what we've also come to realize, sometimes didn't even bother assaying. We have holes in our database that show as no assays. We go back to the core graveyard and we notice there's economic mineralization across them. You know, 5%, 10 meters of 5, 6%. Well, that starts to get very interesting because, again, from Cominco's perspective, we know that there's a whole lot more left here to discover. We already, we have a 50 million ton resource, but we still believe the best is yet to come. You can see here some of these historical drill holes that Cominco never bothered following up on. So we know there's a lot of work to be done. But something else, actually I'll go back quickly here, something else that you need to remember is you can actually see those, those white lines are haul roads. So those haul roads, there's a picture further down in the presentation. These haul roads are 25 meters wide. There's no permafrost up here. Uh, we can drill and we do drill year round. Uh, so these haul roads give us access to the entire property. There's actually a paved highway running along the southern boundary of our property. And there's a hydroelectrical substation on site. So we actually have hydroelectrical power on our property. We have all of the infrastructure necessary to advance a project. And that's really important. You will see a lot of remote assets. This is not a remote asset. The Canadian federal government in the 60s brought all of the necessary infrastructure to develop uh, this mine when it was in production and left that infrastructure there. 
But that 60 kilometers of strike link gives us a lot of areas to go explore. It's the scale. This is a camp scale project where we know we have a lot of areas to go hunting for new and additional resources across our land package. Um, this is the geology. What I want to point out here more than anything else is that we are looking for shallow mineralization. Um, that East Mill Zone is 0 to 50 meters depth. North and Central is anywhere from 50 to 100 meters depth. And that West Zone is, call it 100 to 125. This is easy ore to go and capture. It has uh, the majority of the mineralization has a low strip ratio, not a lot of overburden. This is stuff that we can quickly go put in a future mill that we would construct right next to the historical uh, tailings that are owned by tech. Um, you know, it's, it's something that you will often, that people will often lose sight of. What does six and a half percent zinc equivalent mean in a pit constraint scenario? Well, that's the same thing if I came to you and I said two and a, I had two and a half percent, nearly two and a half percent copper in an open pit. It's very high grade pit constraint mineralization. 90% of zinc production is underground. So really, we are in a very unique position to, to have a project that is near surface and throughout the entire property near surface mineralization. On an NSR basis, it's higher grade than 90, or would have a higher NSR than 90% of global zinc, copper, or uh, gold open pit operations. So again, driving home that point that this is a high grade operation. But one of the key things here that a lot of people lose sight of when they're looking at zinc projects, and really any base metal projects, um, is concentrate quality. Here, whether we're talking about mercury, arsenic, iron, we have low deleterious elements in a high grade quality project. Uh, sorry, high grade quality concentrate. So what that means is we are not faced with penalties and even more so smelters, traders who are trading high uh, penalty projects or concentrates need this type of concentrate to be able to blend down impurities. So for us, it's a, it's, a very, it's, a, it's a concentrate that will be in high demand from spelters globally as they fight for something of this quality. Uh, we've already received express interest for, you know, 12, well, not 12, sorry, but four to five times our potential production. So this is something that will be highly interesting for us as we continue advancing the project. You can see here all of the infrastructure, Hay River, population nearly 3,000, has an airport, CN Rail owns the, the rail that uh, comes up the Hay River three times uh, a week. They bring up fuel, so it is an active logistic hub, hydroelectrical power on site, 12 cents Canadian a kilowatt, so low power. Um, it really has everything we need to advance this. These are the haul roads you can see. This is the rail access um, leading to Resicanda. We can send our concentrate to trail. A portion will go to trail. Historically, it went there. But it will go to Asia. It will go to, to Europe. We can send it wherever we want. So really, what I want to make sure people walk away from this is that we are going to be advancing this project. We are, we've done scoping studies. We now have the resource base to uh, potentially uh, outline a top 10 zinc miner in the world. That's where we're going to be kicking off our PEA most likely next week with an objective of releasing it by Q2 next year. We are going to be drilling for exploration, a multitude of exploration targets across our property as we look for more quality to add to, our, to the resource base. It is one of the highest grade pit constraint projects globally. And if you have to think of a zinc projects, this is it. It is Osisco Metals and Pine Point with clean concentrate and high grades. That's it. If there are any questions, more than happy to answer them.